It is often said that science should be objective. Yet, researchers are human beings with emotions and passions and are therefore affected by situational pressures. Consequently, both individual and contextual factors may greatly influence a researcher's moral judgment. Meet John, a PhD student who has been integrated into a group of a well-known research institution. From the very beginning, John observed that the environment there seems to be quite competitive and demanding in terms of scientific performance. Everyone seems to be rather afraid to perish if they don't publish. After one year working in the lab, John has to write a report of his work and of the results obtained in his experiments. The report is crucial to be admitted into the second year of the program. John is really concerned about this report hmm. because he has failed to find some results from his third experiment due to a microbiological contamination. He shares his concern with his supervisor who tells him that he can try to estimate the values using a complex statistics method in order to have results for the report. But his supervisor is writing a paper and can only give him three minutes of his time. The truth is that John doesn't know how to use the method and the report is crucial for his future. While trying to decide what to do, he thinks that this is not so serious since it's all about a few results. With the results from the first and second experiment, it is easy to estimate the missing values. John is likely to experience discomfort that may be referred to as cognitive dissonance or moral distress. This may be because he knows that he should not manipulate the data, but is prevented from doing the right thing by barriers and adverse incentives, such as pressure to have results, evaluation rules, publish or perish culture. After doing it only once, John is already going down the slippery slope of an ethical research behavior towards moral disengagement. The more often an ethical behavior is justified, the more John will perceive it as justified. At some point on the slippery slope, John will become morally disengaged by having reframed the situation so often that he will no longer perceive an unethical act as unethical. The report has been a success and John has been invited to submit his results to a very prestigious journal. He ends up submitting the article, feeling stressed about not doing the right thing. Since he needs to reduce the moral distress, he tries to find a moral justification for bending the rules rather than breaking them. Come on, John, he says to himself, go ahead, stop complicating, look around. Everybody does the same and in the end they will finally respect you since you're drawing attention to the institution. John gets his PhD and climbs up the ladder of his research career. After a huge amount of papers published and after the second, third, fourth round of banning the rules, John obtains his tenure. Eventually, after having finally reached his tenure position, serious flaws in his research are detected. He's accused of research misconduct and suspended from his lab. Yet, as we probably know by experience, the end of the story could be different. John could be rewarded with a successful career after having influenced many PhD students with his unethical method for success. What if we rewrote the story? On the very first day, the group leader informs John that he has to sign a research integrity checklist covering all aspects of the European Code of Conduct. Moreover, John is told that he must attend eight hours of training in integrity before he starts doing his lab experiments. The environment seems to be quite demanding, not only in terms of scientific performance, but also regarding ethical compliance. After one year working in the lab, John has to write and present a report of his work and of the results obtained in his experiments. The report is important, but more important is the evaluation by the PI during their weekly meetings. John is concerned about hmm. this report because he has failed to find some results from his third experiment due to a microbial contamination. He shares his concern with his supervisor, who tells him that he should not worry 
because he himself saw the contaminated material during his regular lab visits, and this is something that happens quite often. John is confident that the data from the third experience will validate the previously obtained data, but he really believes that science can only progress with honesty. The report is a success, and he's advised to repeat the third experiment in order to submit the work to a very prestigious journal. He ends up submitting the article, feeling pleased about doing the right thing. When John faces an ethical dilemma, together with the question, what should I do? He always wonders, who should I be? And how does who I am affect my decisions and actions? John is convinced that only by a constant striving for excellence of character of researchers may we aspire to living in good scientific ecosystems that foster the pursuit of virtue by researchers in virtuous institutions.